Hey, good morning, everybody. It's great to be with you. It's time for the morning briefing. It's bright and early here at Sunrise. I'm fishing Surfside, California. You've got uh, two worms out there. I started my project last night, came out here, wormed up. So I got plenty of worms and I got a bait out there. So your job is really simple. If I get bit, make sure you let me know because I am going to give you the morning briefing. Always great to be with you. I hope you're having a cup of coffee and enjoying the update this morning. And I have a lot of optimism for you. I mean, wow. I mean, there was an orca show down there in San Diego yesterday that was absolutely incredible. Before I get into the reasons I'm optimistic, I've got to address this. And at the end of today's report, I will have an orca quiz for you to test your knowledge about these magnificent creatures so stay tuned for that but what a show it was down there several boats in on it the liberty the san diego they had this orca show that was incredible and unfortunately for the dolphin those orcas and dolphin came together down there and you can only imagine what happened with those apex predators you know i talk a lot about fishing and sometimes people have a hard time relating to it like you know i don't get it why do you spend so much time doing that what, what's the lure to it and there's two ways that I approach people who don't fish and that's number one the places fishing take you to are some of the most beautiful places on the face of the earth whether you travel to another country whether you're on the backside of Catalina Island whether you're up there in the Channel Islands the pristine natural beauty of those places is undeniable it is so great and the second thing a way to appeal to get somebody into the sport is to talk about the natural phenomenon you get to see, whether it's the gray whale migration, grunion rolling up on the beach, or an incredible orca show like they had down there in San Diego yesterday. So many reasons why we're all blessed to be anglers, and it just makes it that much more intriguing and that much more fun. All right, let me get into what's biting and what's not, and the reason for optimism is I mean, I could feel it in my little tootsies out there just a moment ago. Beautiful warm water. That water is as warm as I felt it in a while. And as I looked at the buoy just offshore, I looked at the buoy information anyway, 64 degrees at the buoy. Sometimes it gets a little warmer in here on the beach. So I'm telling you, I'm optimistic because what we've been battling is cooler water here in northern Baja and southern California and dirty water it's starting to clean up it's starting to look much better if we can stay away from any sustained blows any really windy weather we're going to be good and the weather right now whether you're looking at that san diego tuna or you're up in the channel islands is glorious it is really really beautiful so fingers crossed that that is going to hold all right the boys that are fishing that bluefin tuna still a little bit spotty that stuff's moving up toward the border now it's way up from Ensenada. There's still scattered fish down there around Ensenada. Pongueros down there are getting a piece of it. And at Todo Santos Island, we're starting to see some yo-yo iron yellowtail being taken. That's off of Ensenada, 60 so miles down below the border. That's still providing some good fun and entertainment for the local guys down there in Ensenada. We walk up and the San Diego fleet is right below the border in some cases. And that's good news for those 6 a.m. boats. On the bad side is, man, I mean, anything that floats can get on that fish right now. And sometimes the boat pressure gets to be a little much. Hit and miss for the most part. Um, and by that, I mean less than a fish per rod for many of the boats down there. But still some epic nighttime bites going on down there. I mean, awesome fishing where you end up with limits of these fish. I'm going to say it's 18 to 100 plus pounds right now. There's quite a bit of that 18 pound bluefin gin running around. That's still beautiful fish great sashimi quality fish when you get those and take proper care of them bleed them and do everything you're supposed to do but really really moving up the line and you wonder is that headed toward tanner bank again is there fish already on tanner bank those are questions that are going to get answered here very very soon as we continue to watch it for you very closely liberty 68 yellowtail three bluefin tuna and an incredible show on the orcas and I mentioned the yellows because there's more and more yellows on the kelps. So guys are looking at those kelps as the water warms up. That is going to become more prevalent. That's another nice option for everybody down there to be able to hit those kelps, especially 
if you're on that day and a half type trip and you get it done at night in a great night bite, then you're able to, of course, uh, spend the day looking for kelps, looking for more tuna. Um, the jigs that are being used still in that 100 gram to 300 gram, most of it is, uh, you know, up to a couple, am I a bit? Probably freaking kelp. Uh, I thought it was bit. Uh, you know, the, the jigs are getting distracted here, man. I thought I had a spot fin croaker. Uh, you know, 180 to 250 is about right. Sometimes you can even fish that 100 gram lure, those flat falls, the canas, knife jigs. Those are very effective at night and working really, really well. So please make sure you've got proper tackle. And remember, we've talked about the diversification of your tackle here. And that means you do need the lighter stuff to fish those kelp patty yellowtails. You definitely need fluorocarbon. Don't leave home without Opsin fluorocarbon. W, 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 OpsinUSA.com. Put in FA at checkout and you'll get a note and a free gift from Greg. And I'm keeping his writing hand going down the tubes because he's been really doing well and I'm so happy for Greg. Opsin fluorocarbon, bring that. You want 1.0 to 2.0 hooks when you're fishing those yellows on the kelps, choose a good lively bait, but also you've got to have, I, I like 80 to 100 pound. Guys are saying 60 to 80 pound on the big rig, two speed reels. Definitely got to have that because there's some mammoth bluefin tuna running around down there and it looks good. San Diego yesterday, nine yellowtail, two bluefin and a bonito. So you can see it is kind of hit and miss for some guys. Some days you have the horseshoe, some days you don't. Overnight boat, same kind of a situation. That fish moving uphill, I get the feeling that the light switch is gonna go back on big time again. We get used to limits, 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 and then you start catching below limits and you think the end of the world is here, but we still are very blessed to have that fishery right out our back door and we'll continue to monitor and watch that for you very, very closely as that fish is on the move. And guys are gonna spread out. Some guys are out to the west where they may catch an albacore or two one of these days. That water temp is still perfect for that to happen. We'll have another albacore update for you at the beginning of next week. So hang on for that. And once again, hopefully that bluefin switch is gonna go up. All right, taking a look at the local. I'll just take you up the coast from Ensenada up to the Channel Islands. and. It is mostly sculping, rockfish, doing that kind of a thing. As the water warms up, we're starting to see a few big home guard yellows down around Point Loma, a little bit of bass in there sometimes, not bad. A lot of shorts with some legals also, and at times decent. Same thing as we move you up around Dana, up there in San Pedro, private boaters have been picking off some bass here and there, but most of the sport boats are focused on sculping, catching a few bass now. Water's warming up and cleaning up. That's what I mean. That light switch, I think, is going to go off here very, very soon. So we're monitoring that. And then up in the Channel Islands, local bite, picking away at the rockfish, that kind of stuff. Sometimes slow, sometimes pretty decent. So we're monitoring that for you all very, very closely. And once again, when it's tough like that, fluorocarbon, lighter line, all of those things will come into play for you. All right, let's talk about the islands here. So we're talking Catalina, first of all, kind of on the slower side, but conditions vastly improved. That's going to go off here very soon. Watch the pursuit. Watch those boys that are over there fishing that island. I'm, I'm seeing some yellowtail in their future here very soon. More bonita and more calico bass. Hopefully it won't be too much longer. There's no wind. It's beautiful as you can see here this morning. So hopefully that is getting ready to go. And I'm uh, going to be watching that very closely. Clemente, same thing. Big bird schools of bonita up the front side of the island. There's yellows there also. Calico bass fishing should start to go off the hook. And Clemente, while overlooked as a rockfish destination, there's some nice, big, fat reds out there in that neck of the woods. So that looking good. And Santa Barbara and San Nicolas Island, where the cat's kind of out of the bag on that now. But um, those areas, some really good halibut fishing. Saw some big halibut on the Amigo here recently. The Pride had a huge day the other day on the halibut. It's been really outstanding halibut fishing this year. 
Hopefully that's going to continue. We'll continue to monitor and watch it for you very, very closely. You know, dropper loop fishing is what most of those guys are doing, and heavy line uh, is definitely the way to go. I would love to get your opinion on whether you tie your dropper loop rig with fluorocarbon or not. Many people say it doesn't matter, especially crew guys, and I highly respect and take their opinion into the highest level. I mean, I'm a guy doing a podcast, spend most of my time in a studio. So, you know, when I want to know what's going on, I ask Jeff Jessup, I ask Marsh Paisano, Tino Valentine. I ask the guys that are out there on the water. Most of those guys will say, it doesn't matter. However, there are a few guys and many anglers who say, what the hell? I'm going to go with floral. I think it makes a difference. So if you get a chance, throw a comment up. Many of you have already done that on YouTube, but what's been your experience when dropper loop fishing? Do you use floral? Does it work? Do you not use it? It's irrelevant. I think part of that has to do with time of day. Like if you're fishing before the sun comes up, probably doesn't matter at all, but perhaps it has some influence on whether you get a bite or not in the daytime hours. So dropper loops, so you want to have some six to eight ounce torpedo sinkers, 5.0 size hooks. Uh, you can vary that 3.0 to 7.0 size hooks if you want. I like fishing a big hook, so when you pin them, you pin them good. Uh, there's yellows, there's sea bass, there's good halibut fishing. There's been some yo-yo iron, yellow tail taken. It's been a little bit spotty here recently, has not been wide open. Freedom yesterday, four halibut, and not much of a show on the exotics at all. Talking sea bass and yellowtail, just was a different day, Tino Valentine was telling me. But, you know, every day is different in sport fishing. That is the beauty of it all. Ranger 85, my buddy Scott Buchard's on board. They picked away at the halibut, and there's been a smattering of sea bass up there in the Channel Islands. I know that on the Aloha Spirit, Sean Stewart was saying, it's cleaning up, it's warming up get ready. And that's how I feel about this. That's why I'm so optimistic. I think we're going to get a warming trend in the water. I think the fish are going to start to bite. And really, I can't wait. For the next five days or so, I think it's going to be very, very interesting. Um, along the surf here, don't forget you have your orca uh, questionnaire coming up or your quiz coming up in just a second. No bite so far for me. What the heck? I was hoping I would hang a nice big spot fin for you here this morning. Surf fishing, as I put my toes out in water, that's warm water now. It feels really good. There's going to be corvina in the shallows. You can fish them with these sandworms that I dig up all the time in my spare time because I have nothing better to do. Also, very effective baits are mussel. Sand crabs work good, and they're in the shallows. They're wily critters. They're discriminating feeders. So you want to go with floral carbon, six pound. Works really, really well. And of course, if you're looking for gear to fish the surf fish with, I love that Daiwa Fuego 3000. It's got the mag seal, which is so important when you're fishing the surf. The mag seal keeps all this sand and dirt and all this other stuff that will inevitably come into contact with your reel, keeps it out. It's a great reel, about a hundred bucks. You can get them down here at Big Fish Bait and Tackle. You can get them over at Sam's Place in Carson, California, Island Fishing Tackle definitely want to fish with that reel. Inexpensive, high quality, lasts a long time. That's all I fish with. It is a great reel. Also, some spot fin, yellow fin, croaker, and we're at that magical time. That's why I'm out here fishing this morning when you have sunrise and the high tide almost right at it. Tonight, you get the same thing with the sunset. You're going to have that magical time period also. And by that, I mean you have the high tide combining with sunrise which is magical sometimes they bite at sunrise no matter what the tide is but when you get a high tide combined with it then it's really really a good time to fish and then this evening you're going to have the sunset right at high tide high tide here is at 6 30 so we got a little ways to go i'm gonna fish a little bit longer maybe delay your morning briefing just a little bit so i can see if i can catch a fish or two but surf fishing definitely picking up next grunion run may 30th so halibut are going to be moving in on the beaches and there's been some outstanding catches of halibut a guy stopped in at big fish bait and tackle just the other day i think two days ago and then he went off and he caught this beautiful fish man you have got to love it he took the time to get live bait so he's snagging smelt and then fishing with that, 
what a beautiful 40 inches that big beautiful fish he stopped in at big fish bait and tackle on the corner of seal beach boulevard and pacific coast highway got some intel he purchased uh, the stuff to keep the bait alive in a bucket and the aerator and all that and oh my god that is one heck of a surfish and part of the reason i'm out here this morning i saw that and was dreaming about it all night long all right here's your orca quiz let's see how good you are right now how long do orcas live 50 to 80 years a male adult orca how long does it get what's the length 20 to 26 feet how much can an adult male orca weigh have a guess 13,200 pounds what do you call an adult or what do you call a male orca a bull what do you call a female orca no jokes now a cow and what do you call a baby orca a calf all right two more questions and then I'll let you go I know you're tired of this already what do you call a group when there's a bunch of orcas together yes a pod and what does an orca weigh at birth oh these freaking crows are right here you know you need a lid on your worms because these crows will come over and screw you every time when you're uh, fishing uh, a baby at birth 350 pounds there you have it all right hey beautiful morning i hope you are doing well hope you're having a great day listen to me light switch is going to go on here it's a little bit kind of spotty right now you can see that hear that but hang on light switch is getting ready to go on how do i know that that water's getting warmer it's cleaning up things are going to start popping here maybe even later today albacore forecast update next week we'll keep you in touch with all the latest we do have two openings on our amigo trip sailing out of beautiful 22nd street landing wednesday night june the 15th when the white sea bass limit goes to tres it goes to three so we'll be able to take three per day that looks like a great trip We've had two cancellations so jump on before it is too late you want info late you want info on that trip you want to sign up for that trip all you got to do is send me a text at six five seven two two seven six four five nine as always it is a pleasure to be with you all i thought i was bit again i'll uh, be back with more and i thank you for spending a little bit of time with me here this morning take care my friend creatures on the face of the earth around stingray they are nasty they can really screw you up so that was soaking on there the entire time during the morning briefing all right i'm going to get this little devil off and get back to fishing